Welcome to this technical workshop on ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. My name is Madhura Fatarpekar and I am a product manager at Esri. At Esri, I work on the Esri Adobe integration, including this plugin. Along with me today presenting this session is my teammate, Sarah Bell. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Bell and I'm a cartographer at Esri and the new lead product engineer for Maps for Adobe. And today I'm excited to share with you a pair of map making tutorials with Maps for Adobe. And the session will be moderated by another teammate, Anna Breton. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Breton. I'm a product engineer on the ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud team. And I'm fortunate enough to work alongside Sarah and Madura every single day. Um, and today I will be working as the workshop moderator. Um, in addition to that, I will be answering questions in the chat alongside some other team members. So feel free to ask any question you have uh, about the demos you see and about the product, and we'll try to get you answers as quickly as we can. We're all really excited and looking forward to sharing with you information on what is ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud and showing you some of the new improvements we've made to the plugin's workflows. Let's talk briefly about cartography and design. Modeling and placing data in geographic space alone is not adequate to make a compelling map. Design is a key descriptor when thinking and talking about cartography. A map that evokes a reaction and clearly conveys its purpose, its story, to its readers, drives critical conversations and decisions. Such maps are also sure to demonstrate design principles, such as visual hierarchy, contrast and balance in color, use of texture, even motion to draw the reader's attention to what is most important. The topic of cartographic design deserves its own discussion. John Nelson and Ken Fields, my colleagues, will talk about this tomorrow at 1 p.m. when they discuss thematic mapping. I highly recommend this session for a much deeper dive into the art and science of cartography. In this talk today, we are going to demonstrate how you can use cartographic design when working with maps across GIS and design. Let's take a look at some common scenarios in which map making tasks could flow between ArcGIS and Adobe. This is based on conversations with many map makers like you from different organizations across many industries. As I go over this, I encourage you to think about how your team's role might relate here. Many organizations have GIS groups where analysts working on data use ArcGIS tools to query or process, run geoprocessing, and serve the results that could be used in a number of ways. There might be a need in such systems to collaborate across teams within the organization for creating professional looking reports and presentations based on analysis from the GIS team. A cartographer who is competent in a wide range of capabilities from data processing to visualizing to finishing and even designing the map. They have a need to support a variety of mapping and aesthetic requirements and need creative control with tools and workflows that they can use on any map at a given time. Graphic design teams are content creators who require to provide well-branded maps and well-designed maps for presentation and marketing material, but don't have access to authoritative content curated by mapping professionals. So which one of these do you relate to? Chime into chat and tell us. Maybe it's none of these. Share with us if you can here in chat or come chat with us later about your needs for using mapping and graphic workflows together. When it comes to mapping, ArcGIS has the best solutions and tools to work with a wide variety of spatial data. Adobe, on the other hand, offers many ways to integrate an aesthetic and your brand into any graphic, including maps and illustrations. Adobe apps like Illustrator and Photoshop are commonly used in the graphic design community to create visual content. The ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud or Maps for Adobe plugin acts as a bridge 
between ArcGIS and Adobe, especially for creating and finishing workflows when it comes to maps. So one can consume maps from ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Pro, Living Atlas, and now ArcGIS Enterprise even for use in graphic design workflows in a format that is design ready. This allows use of ArcGIS maps in design and even further into publishing or motion graphic workflows. So in this talk, Sarah and I will show you how to get started with the Maps for Adobe extension. By the way, if you hear us call it plugin or extension, know that it's both the same. Both the terms extension and plugin are used interchangeably and that's okay. We'll take a deep dive into the two main workflows with the plugin. One, where we show you how to bring your ArcGIS Pro maps into Illustrator. And the second is how you can directly get map data into Illustrator or Photoshop in a self-serving way so you can make the most of your GIS to design workflows. We're going to show you a new mapping profile recently introduced in the plugin specifically to use with vector-based maps, something that many of you have been requesting from us. Throughout the presentation, if you have questions or need clarification, feel free to drop us a line in the live chat. Anna, who you heard from earlier, is an awesome moderator who's looking out for these questions along with several other experts who will be ready to respond or relay them to us later for a Q&A. So let's begin with how to get started. So Maps for Adobe is a plugin, but what does that really mean? It means it's a separate product or a tool that you will need to install. And you install it with Adobe apps, not ArcGIS. Since Adobe supports both Mac and PC, we have both Mac and PC versions of the plugin available to download. What versions of Adobe apps does it support? Some of you might be wondering. Our documentation is regularly updated with this information. Since Adobe frequently updates their software and retires older versions, we try to stay current with the currently supported versions as close as possible. I encourage you to check out documentation, which outlines this from which you can get to from this URL. So the plugin installs in Illustrator and Photoshop and after installing is accessible from its Windows extension menu as you see here. When you launch it, one of the first things you will need to do is activate the plugin with a valid license. And there are three possibilities for valid licenses. First, if you are already an ArcGIS named user, that is you have ArcGIS Pro, any of the three flavors, or creator or viewer or editor, for using ArcGIS in other workflows, then you can already use that existing ArcGIS named user account or license to sign in and activate the plugin. Just a note that viewers and editors can use the extension starting with version 3.0, not previous versions. But what does this mean if you have the licenses already? That means you're good to go and there's no additional steps besides installing the plugin software. And if you don't have an ArcGIS named user license, well, of course you can sign up for one, but you can also use one of the other two options to sign up for either a Maps for Adobe Plus, which is a monthly subscription or a complimentary subscription. The complimentary is a no cost subscription, but is a limited feature license for personal use only, not designed for commercial purposes. Also, as we're looking at this dialogue, let's talk a little bit about using ArcGIS Maps for Adobe with ArcGIS Enterprise. This is newly introduced and highly requested by many of you, so let's talk about it. It's a similar way of activation. You need a named user account with your enterprise, and you'll need your enterprise portal URL that you can enter here, then sign in with your account. Also, if you're responsible for administering ArcGIS Enterprise for your organization, then you should note that the extension supports enterprise versions 10.9 and greater. It leverages services available through your ArcGIS. Utility services such as printing, geometry, geocoding, and geoenrichment are used in the different features that are accessible 
within the plugins workflow. Also, depending on your portal configuration, content such as Living Atlas may or may not be available for access within the plugin. Okay, so that's about getting started. Now let's take a deeper look at one of the key workflows. In this case, we're going to talk about bringing in maps from ArcGIS Pro into Illustrator. As a map maker and an analyst, you could have a need to finish maps in graphics application after creation, or perhaps for accessing style or brand information that's available through Adobe libraries or its asset management repositories. Like any process that converts content from one form to another, there are some best practices that are useful to consider when preparing a map in ArcGIS Pro for use in Adobe. On this slide is listed a few different map authoring capabilities, some of which that are and some are not well suited for a graphic design workflow. Most items listed on the left work well with graphic editing. So for example, let's take a curve text, a label on a curve, say following some kind of a linear feature as a river. When, when that curve text is converted into an illustrator, it preserves its text or type characteristics. That means you can live edit that text. But text halos, on the other hand, are not great for graphic editing in Illustrator. So you might choose to hold off if you need to use it in your map design. It doesn't disrupt the design workflow, and it might even look like a halo when you bring it in Illustrator, but it actually turns out to be a shape. So let's say you change the font of the text, then the halo will not automatically recreate to match the new font. Knowing this sort of thing upfront helps you choose what level of map authoring you should follow in ArcGIS Pro if and only if your end goal is to bring it into Illustrator for graphic design. It's no secret that ArcGIS Pro has some amazing visualization tools and features, and it's worth repeating that this slide here is best practices for an Illustrator workflow only. It has no implication on map authoring for other things, let's say for publishing to the web. So once you've determined this level and applied your cartography accordingly, the next step is the same. This involves an export step. If you've ever done this with ArcMap, you'll notice that this seems similar, but it's still a little bit different. In ArcGIS Pro, we export to an intermediate format, AIX. See, Adobe closed the AI format several years ago. So instead of relying on an older integration, this way offers a modern approach, one that is adaptable and scalable to future changes in Adobe or in ArcGIS. Like exporting a map from Pro, this is pretty straightforward, but some settings come in handy and they are highlighted here. For example, compress vector graphics. It's a great file saver. Or DPI. In most cases, a 300 DPI, which is equivalent to a PPI, will work great. Unlike ArcMap, you don't need very high DPIs in ArcGIS Pro to get smooth vectors. This is simply because of the improvements made to ArcGIS Pro for mapping and cartography. And it saves file size too. So that's enough of me talking. I'll kick it off to Sarah to show you a demonstration of this workflow. As a reminder, keep your questions coming in chat and we'll be happy to address them. Thank you, Madura. Now that Madura has provided us all with a great background on Maps for Adobe, including some of the new features we're introducing in version 3.0, I'm going to demonstrate Maps for Adobe for you. Maps for Adobe is an extension that Esri developed for use in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. And when you have an extension or a plugin installed, you'll be able to open the extension just by going to the Windows menu in either Illustrator or Photoshop. And then there's the extension slide menu, and you'll find it there after you have it installed. ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. So I'll open that, and it opened on my other screen, so I'll just pull over here. So for those of you who have already used Maps for Adobe, this might look a little different to you, but this is our new sign-in sheet for version 3.0. And as Maduro was saying a few moments ago, Maps for Adobe 3.0 supports ArcGIS Enterprise, which is how you would um, you would enter that by just clicking right here and entering your enterprise credentials. I'm going to sign in using my ArcGIS Online account.
and it opened on my other monitor, so I'll drag it on over here. The first thing that opens when you sign into Maps for Adobe will typically be uh, the Map Boards panel. We also have the Compilation panel here, and I'll describe these two panels in a moment. At last year's UC, we announced the integration of ArcGIS Pro with Maps for Adobe. And this comes in the form of exporting that AIX file from ArcGIS Pro and opening it in Adobe Illustrator with Maps for Adobe. Madura already gave us a great explanation of the AIX export process in Pro, including the fonts and all of the settings that you might want to choose. So now I'm going to show you this process. So I'm going to go to Pro and export in AIX, and then I'll come back in Illustrator and open it for you. All right, so the map that I'm going to be demonstrating is of the New River Gorge National Park in West Virginia, USA. The New River Gorge National Park and Recreation Area is America's newest national park. This is a blog post that I wrote about including inset maps in, in an AIX file when you're using ArcGIS Pro to illustrate a workflow with Maps for Adobe. And I'll share the URL for this blog post at the end. So let's dive into Pro to see how this map was made. Okay, so here we are in ArcGIS Pro. And I have ArcGIS Pro open with my New River Gorge National Park map selected, the, the layout. And in the layout, I have two maps added. I have the main New River map, and I have the West Virginia inset map. So let's take a look at the main New River map real quick. So this is a map versus a the layout. The layout can contain many different map elements, including maps. And this is one of those maps that it does contain. And in this map, this is where I can add data. Granted, I understand this is not the most aesthetically pleasing map, but the whole point is I'm going to bring it into Illustrator and then use Illustrator to do a lot of the aesthetic design. So I add all of my data, I do analysis in the map, I can do data filtering, styling even, all sorts of stuff. But this is just basically for the purposes of my AIX for this project, I added data, I did data filtering and data editing and some analysis, and then I added it to my layout. So here's that West Virginia inset map. It's a lot simpler. I have a little New River Gorge National Park map polygon here, which will tell readers where in West Virginia my map is. You can even see I have it projected um, appropriately to West Virginia. And you can export an AIX file from a map or from a map layout. For the purpose of this project, I exported it from this layout. So to do that, I would have the Share tab open, and I click Export Layout. Let's hope it opens up on the right monitor. All right, it did. So here we go. Um, and Madura did a great job of describing the settings for uh, that you might want to choose depending on the purposes of your project. So here are my settings that I chose. And again, I chose AIX from the file type and just click export. I'll give that a moment to export and then I will show you it in Illustrator. Okay, so it's done exporting. Let's open it up in Illustrator. Okay, it has opened. Let's take a look at what we have. First of all, I'm gonna I'm on a PC. I'm going to press controls. I'm gonna unlock all the layers. I'll press control zero so that we can see full view. And here we are. When I exported an AIX file from ArcGIS Pro rather than exporting a PDF file, and when I have the Maps for Adobe extension installed, I can open the AIX file like I just did and get a very organized layer structure that matches the ArcGIS Pro project, in my case, the layout that I exported. So the first thing I'm going to do to show you why that's cool is isolate some layers. I have this West Virginia inset map. It just is a parent layer that holds all of the artwork that I added to that inset map, that West Virginia inset map that I pointed out a moment ago. So I will I unlock that group only and say select the park boundary. I can style only the artwork in this layer if I wanted, and I can find it really quickly because it's organized in this layer structure. I'm going to minimize this West Virginia inset map parent layer and check out what's going on beneath here. So I have these labels. So I didn't label any of the layers in the inset map. Otherwise, I would have seen a labels for that as well. 
In this labels parent layer, there is a layer that corresponds to each of the data layers for that map frame that I labeled in ArcGIS Pro. And the layer name matches the name of the layer it's labeling. So this USA counties layer has the county labels, for example. But let's let me isolate the visuals of the layers just to show you exactly what I mean. I think that this river streams is a good one because it has broad, yeah, it covers a lot of the map. So this rivers and streams layer, if I select just the artwork in that layer, I can, as you can see, the font is the same as I set in my pro project. I can globally change this font to anything I want. So I could change it to bell, topo, sans, italic if I wanted to, and now they all change globally. If you've worked with an ArcGIS Pro PDF export and illustrator, you can appreciate the new layer organization that the AIX file offers because PDF exports come with no layer organization and the ability to know exactly where to find all of your map features for styling is very convenient in the AIX export. That's cool, I could globally change the colors of the labels if I wanted to, all of that wonderful stuff. So that's just an example of the labels. Now I'm going to turn on all the layers in the main map of focus parent layer, but I'll keep the hill shade turned off. Remember this main map of focus layer represents that map frame from ArcGIS Pro, and it contains the same layers that were present in the ArcGIS Pro layout. I have this clipping path, which we also had the same thing for the West Virginia map. If I turn on this inset map again, I have a clipping path right here. And what this clipping path does is it clips or crops the appearance of the artwork to this particular box so that you know the states aren't bleeding outside of the box onto the background of the map. And the clipping path for the main map of focus map frame, this clipping path clips the appearance of all of that artwork to the Illustrator map board. So that's really convenient. I wanna show you one more set of layers in this Illustrator file, but before I do, let's go back to ArcGIS Pro so that I can properly demonstrate how you too can also set up your maps in this way. So let's go back to Pro. Okay, so here we are back in ArcGIS Pro, and what you're seeing now is that for that main map of focus map frame, I've isolated the visibility to only show the world navigation base map. And this base map is one of Esri's popular vector tile base maps, and it's a very well-designed base map that renders the appropriate amount of data for the scale. So at this 1 to 80,000 scale, for my new River Gorge map, I won't get building footprints, for example, because that would be too much data and it would make it kind of noisy visually. In addition to displaying data reasonably by the scale, the base maps are vector, which is pretty great for a lot of reasons, but for the purpose of this demonstration, let's focus on why it's great for maps for Adobe users like you. Adobe Illustrator is a vector graphic editing program and vector tile base maps are of course vector as well. So by including this base map in my AIX file, I will get an organized set of layers that contain all of these vector elements when I open the map in Illustrator. So what I like to do, and let me expand this a little bit more, uh, is to add this world navigation vector tile base map because it is a well-designed comprehensive set of vector data. So now what I'd like to do is go back to Illustrator to check out how those layers from the world navigation vector tile base map are delivered in the AIX file exports. So let's open Illustrator. All right, here we are. All right, I have all the layers turned on right now. What I'm going to do is just isolate the visibility of just the layers that are in this world navigation map parent layer, which is a sub layer of that main New River map parent layer because that is the map frame that I included that world navigation vector tile base map. So I'm going to hold alt just to isolate. Alt and click will isolate the visibility of a layer but I need to turn on all the sub layers as well. Just trying to share the shortcuts as I press them in Illustrator. All right, so I'm gonna highlight that just to kind of like let our focus know that it's on there. So here's what's going on in this. And um, when I say artwork, by the way, that's because that is the term that Illustrator uses for paths, editable vector paths in Illustrator. So that's the appropriate term once you're in Illustrator. So all of the artwork that belongs to those data layers has been organized into their discrete layer. And it's, 
the names of these layers come from the name of this vector tile base map. So it doesn't say labels. However, this all of the labels, just like most base maps and most map in general, are at the top of the stack. So we have labels for the point data, labels for the polygon data, labels for the roads. And then we have the artwork. So we have the roads, the point data. So that is the same way that all of these data layers are organized. So all of these green polygons, for example, I'll just deselect this. All of these green polygons represent green space or open space. And this big giant chunk of green is the New River Gorge National Park and Preserve. So I was able to use some of these labels, which were useful for my map, some of these artwork or data uh, for my map. I didn't use all of them, but I just wanted to show you how convenient it is. And it was pretty easy to just add to my ArcGIS Pro project and export as an AIX file. So now I'm going to jump over to the final product. Let me, before I go over there, let me just turn on all those layers again, including the raster layer. Um, but here it is as raw. So I spent some time with this map, styled it, and here it is. Here we are at Illustrator looking at the final style of the New River Gorge National Park and Preserve map. And once again, let me show you that in the blog post in case you want to check that out later. So here's the URL. I'll share the URL at the end of my demo before I hand it back to Madura. So now I'm going to move back to Adobe Illustrator to demonstrate for you all the basics of for making a map with Maps for Adobe. This workflow is, let's call it the classic workflow, if you will, of Maps for Adobe, where the entire map making process is performed in the extension directly inside Adobe Illustrator. However, while a lot of you in the audience may have seen this workflow or even have done this workflow many times, I will be sharing one of the very exciting new features available to you in version 3.0 if you're using ArcGIS account to sign in. But before I make that map, I want to refresh you all on a convenient collaboration feature related to that new River Gorge map that I just showed. So let's go back to Adobe Illustrator to make some maps. So here we are back in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm going to open maps for Adobe. I'll start with the map board panel. Oops, it opened over there. Can I get over here? Mm, right here. here. <laughs> all right, so here we are. So notice I'm in the map boards panel. There's three panels associated with maps for Adobe the map boards, the compilation, and the processes panel. In the map boards panel, notice that there's this rectangle, and it's titled Main Map of Focus in the map board panel. So this rectangle is called a map board. And the reason that this map board is here in Maps for Adobe is that when an AIX file is exported from ArcGIS Pro, information comes along with that file that allows Maps for Adobe to load the map frames or map extents. So in the world of map making collaboration, this is pretty exciting because if you're a GIS analyst who is familiar with data analysis and you're making your maps in Pro, you just know the skills and what it takes to make a map, all of that analysis. You can do that in Pro, and then you can share your AIX file with a graphic designer who knows and loves Illustrator. And when they open the AIX file, they can style it, but they can also continually add to the map because of this map board embedded information. So let's say you're the analyst and you, um, you realized that a data set has changed or a new data set has to be added to the map. The graphic designer can use Maps for Adobe to do that. So let me show you how. So I, because I have this open, the extent is right over that area in West Virginia. Um, I didn't have to do anything. It just came along with the file. So with that main map of focus, which represents my main map of focus map frame from ArcGIS Pro, with that selected, I go over to the compilation panel. And here is that area uh, in the compilation panel. It's sort of a what you see is what you get preview of your map. So I can continually add content. If I go to add content, remember, this is a review for a lot of you. You are searching for data that is on ArcGIS Online. And it's organized in several different what we call ArcGIS libraries in Maps for Adobe. You have my content, which is associated with your content on your ArcGIS Online account. Your favorites, 
which is great. Oh, I already have it selected. Um, so what your favorites is, it's, it's data that you bookmark if you are continually using the same data repeatedly on your maps for Adobe projects. Like I use counties a lot and states a lot, and obviously I use the soul shade a lot. Um, you can bookmark them instead of having to search through ArcGIS Online, which is, of course, another library. This is this is where you would search ArcGIS Online. So if I had, a let's say, a West Virginia data set that I wanted to add to my map, I could just search ArcGIS Online um, and search for the terms West Virginia. So also, that GIS analyst that I was referencing a minute ago could add add data to their organization. And this is where I would search if they added data that they wanted me to add to my map with Maps for Adobe. I could just add that right here. So I'm going to go back to my favorites and just show you how that would work. Cross out the search term. And I really love this terrain hill shade. I might want to add that. I'm and by clicking plus here on the item, it's not adding it to that Illustrator file. What it's doing is it's adding it to the compilation panel. And I can either choose to sync it to that Illustrator file or not. I'm going to click close to show you. All right, so there we go. So in order to add this to my map, I would just click sync and it would become a new layer in my new River Gorge National Park and Preserve map. Now let's build a map with Maps for Adobe. So I'm going to go to the Map Boards panel, and I'll deselect that map board. And I'm going to draw a map, or I'm going to create a map, of a city in Norway. So I'm going to search for Bergen. Bergen. And it knows to go to Bergen, Norway. I will close this and I'm going to zoom in. It's going to be a very large scale map. So to in the map boards panel, this is generally when you're doing this workflow, I call it the extension direct workflow. When you're making a map directly with the extension inside Adobe Illustrator using Maps for Adobe, you can either import from a web map or a layer or from a file. So you could use a CSV text file GPX KML or KMZ file or shape file, and the extent of your data would define your map board. And you could adjust it after you added it if you wanted. Or you can manually draw your map board. So I'm going to draw my map board around this part of this area in Norway. Now I have these options to uh, give my map board a name. I'm going to name it Bergen underscore map exclamation point. And I can also change the scale and I want to change it to a very large scale, not city block, a little smaller scale than that. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. I've defined my map board parameters, including the extent and scale. I gave it a name and now I'm ready to add data to it. So I go to the compilation panel. You can either click on the panel directly or if it's not open yet, if I click this button, preview and add content, it will open up the MapWords panel. I'm going to control zero on a PC so that I can full extent this MapWord preview area. And remember in ArcGIS Pro, I added the world navigation vector tile base map to my Pro project because it's a wonderfully designed base map with some very useful data for a lot of maps and it renders at a, a reasonable scale. I want these building footprints in my map. I also want a lot of the data that comes with the base map on my map. And I don't want to have to search for and add each data layer individually. Well, now with ArcGIS Maps for Adobe 3.0, you can add vector tile base maps to your map, sync them. In this Extent Direct workflow, you will have that same set of organized layers that come with a base map, all vector, so that you can design them exactly how you want. So let me show you how you do that. So you have your base map layer here. If I hover over the ellipse, I get this select base map option. I'll select it. And I'm going to scroll to the navigation, which is that world navigation vector tile base map. And here we go. So this is a preview of what I will get when I sync this map. I do want to show you uh, one, of, one other tool in the processes panel in a few moments. So I'm going to add one more layer. So in addition to adding layers, from ArcGIS Online or a web map from ArcGIS Online 
or a layer from a file. I could add any one of those to my map and would sync with my Illustrator file. But I'm gonna do add places. So I could search for a particular address right here, but I'm actually gonna search for a more generic term. I'm gonna search for cafe. By searching for this term cafe, spelled this way, I get 33 different results. I could, let me drag this over here so you can see what's going on. It actually will highlight, you can see things sort of flashing on the map. Those are the locations of the cafes. I could add them individually or I could choose to add them all. So that's what I'm going to do. I will add them all. And now I have a, I have a layer right here of cafes point data with this generic point data symbol on my map. I can even manage labels. And what this would do would add the labels to these cafes as well. But I don't need labels for this particular map. So I'm going to minimize this. And now I'm going to create the map. Obviously, I could be adding a lot more data to this map, but I think this is sufficient for this demo. So I will click Sync to create my map. This nice alert is letting me know that after I sync this map, the map word extent and the data associated with this sync will be embedded in the downloaded Illustrator file. So just like that ArcGIS Pro AIX exported map, I can always open that file that I'm about to sync, come back to that synced map, and continually add new data. Okay, and after a little bit of patience, here we are. It says it's successfully synced. So I'm gonna check that out. Here we are. Let me control zero. Now I'm in Illustrator. This is the Illustrator file that I have just synced. Uh, it contains all of the information, all of the layers that I just added. I'll control zero, which is an Illustrator shortcut to get to full extent. And let's check out the layers. And first, I'll point out this sync one layer, which contains all of the data layers that were included in this first sync on my map board. This layer five is the layer that contains all of that map board or all of that vector tile data or artwork now that we're in Illustrator. In version 3.0, the parent layer name that contains the vector tile base maps in this extension direct workflow begins with the string layer, just like you see here, and the sublayer names of that will match the name of the layers that the map maker set. So I'll pan down a little. Because I'm at a much larger scale than I was in the New River Gorge map, I have different data. I have more data. I'm in a different type of environment. I'm in this urban environment instead of a more rural area in West Virginia. So I'm gonna have different data layers here. But just like that New River Gorge map, I have my labels, la my labels layers are at the top of the stack, which is convenient. Exactly how I would want a map designed. And then I have point data. Then I have my line data, so the roads. Then I have my polygon data. So that would be all of the water polygons, the land polygons these green spaces. So right away with this vector tile base map added to my compilation panel, when I sync the map, I get this really wonderful set of artwork that I can use to serve as a base for my map. It's not raster, which means that I can style it however I want. Okay, so I don't have a lot of time left, so I'm going to jump over to a more finished version of this map. Here we go. So here is that same map extent and scale. I created this map that you're looking at in the same way that I just demoed. However, in this version, I also added a hillshade layer, that one that I mentioned previously that I love. Uh, so you can see a little bit of uh, hillshade going on in this more mountainous part of Bergen. I've spent some time in Illustrator styling the different layers of that vector tile base map. I've turned some layers visibility off for the purpose of this map. And then let's check out the cafe layer. I'm going to control space bar to marquee zoom into a dense area of cafes. See this point icon? It's an Adobe Illustrator symbol. I automatically replaced that default point symbology with a symbol from an Illustrator 
symbol library using the symbol process from the Maps for Adobe Processes panel. So here we have this custom symbol replacement process that I used. I encourage you all to check out the features in the Processes panel. It's about time for me to hand it back over to Madura, but before I do, I want to share some cool maps made by some of our users. We held our first Maps for Adobe mapping competition last year, and here are some of the winners. This first one comes from Caitlin Volkanovsky. Caitlin won first place for this great map of the yellow-tailed black cockatoo. Second place is this lovely map by Madeline Baldwin of the Eno River in North Carolina. Our third place winner, uh, this first one, comes from Ian Ladd, who created this gorgeous map of the Kananaskis River in Alberta, Canada. In fact, we had a three-way tie for third place, including this minimalist map of Arkansas by Noah Walker, and this really cool kayak launch site map in Talbot County, Maryland, made by the talented Andrew Burnish. And an announcement, I'm wrapping up a book full of Maps for Adobe tutorials that is going to be available soon, so keep an eye out for that. You might recognize this map cover design because I just showed you it a moment ago. This cover design is from Madeline Baldwin's Eno River map. So all of you map makers out there, will be, we will be having another Maps for Adobe map making competition soon. So remember to follow Maps for Adobe on Twitter, at Maps for Adobe, listed right there on the slide. And I mentioned in this demo that I would share the URL for the blog post of the inset map. And if you can actually find all of the tutorials that I've written for the ArcGIS blog at esraurl.com slash Sarah So just visit that URL and you can see all of these posts that I've done, which are all about different ways that you can use maps for Adobe in your map making workflow. And now, uh, thank you for your time. I'm going to hand it back to Madura, and she's going to give you some closing thoughts. OK, so let's bring this together. I know we're covering a lot of ground, and some of you might be starting to think about how this might apply to the work you do, and are thinking of how to make it more efficient. Here is some more food for that thought. We've talked about AIX a lot today, and this is truly the next way to work with maps as graphics with ArcGIS. And since it's an export format, it's available across ArcGIS for use in many other workflows. Consider automation with ArcPy, with Python, if you have a need to, or perhaps directly printing it from ArcGIS Online or your custom web application. Also think about how to simplify this for your design workflows. Let's say you use the same set of layers a lot in the mapping. Can you use a base map instead? What about some of the existing base maps? Is that something that you could use? And if you're using one of the Esri vector base maps, consider customizing it. Keep in mind that map authoring considerations that we discussed earlier. If you aren't familiar with the vector tile style editor, it's a really cool tool in ArcGIS to customize the look, colors, lines, text of an Esri hosted base map. This would be a great option for GIS leads that say build and serve ArcGIS content for use by others. And there is a text session on Wednesday that talks about this that some of you might find useful. There is a caveat that I'd like to point out to you about customizing or using vector-based maps with ArcGIS Maps for Adobe in Illustrator. Sprites are images. Okay, but what are sprites? Any icon or a road shield or a shape pattern that you would see in a vector tile style is likely a sprite, and it's an image. That's just how it's designed, and it's a fundamental part of the vector tile specification. And since it's an image, it downloads as an image, which is not of great use when you want to design it in Illustrator. It looks fine, but you can't edit it as graphics. But as a part of your customization, you can design your own sprite image and use it in the base map. And this is an option for you to consider. As always, we as product team continue to improve these experiences and look for better ways to make map making easy on that note, we'd love to stay engaged and keep this conversation alive. This URL will take you to our website where you can join a community discussion or share an idea for the product team. So in summary, here are some key takeaways from today's talk. 
There is a continued need to work with maps as graphics for cartography, creativity, or collaboration on map design. And Maps for Adobe connects the ArcGIS world to Adobe's graphic design workflows. Maps for Adobe is now supported in ArcGIS Enterprise, and this is newly released. Also new is we include support for most ArcGIS named users, viewers, editors, in addition to creators and GIS professionals that we previously supported. Also, something that you've highly requested and is now included with Maps for Adobe is support for vector tile based maps. With that, we'd like to open it up for questions. Thank you. Cool. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Q&A live uh, section of the presentation. We have about 15 minutes here uh, to answer some of those questions that we did not get to answer in the chat. Um, so I'm going to start things off by asking Sarah when your map book is going to be released. We have a question Ooh. about that. I'm glad you asked. Can you hear me, Anna? Yes. Great. So the book will be released. There's going to be first an ebook version available in September. And then in November, you can order the hard copy version. Cool. Thank you. Uh, next question is for Madura. Um, is an ArcGIS Online named user account required to be able to manipulate maps in Illustrator? So you need an ArcGIS named user account to uh, activate the plugin. And then you can use the plugin to create maps directly from your ArcGIS organization. Or if you create a, a map in uh, ArcGIS Pro and you want to bring it into Illustrator for styling, then through that AIX workflow that you saw Sarah demonstrate, you can bring in the AIX file with an ArcGIS named user account. Now, there are two other licensing options also available with Maps for Adobe. One is a complimentary, which is a uh, no cost. You can sign up with your email ID, but that's like a personal use uh, license. And then you can subscribe for something that we have called Maps for Adobe Plus subscription, which is an in-app. You, you download the app and you sign in for it within the app itself. Cool. Uh, the next question is for Sarah. Um, is it also possible to export Illustrator artwork vector format to an ArcGIS format? We've had a couple of people ask this question, so. Yeah, no, that is not possible at this time. You can go from ArcGIS to Illustrator, but right now we don't support going back from Illustrator back to ArcGIS. Uh, Madura might have some more to add to that answer. Yeah, we're actually interested in learning more about these workflows where you want to bring in something from Adobe into ArcGIS. So um, if you're watching, if you're still here, and if you've asked the questions, we'd love to connect with you uh, later during the week when you have a moment, perhaps, or you can reach out to us through our community forums, and we'd love to get in, uh, you know, just have a quick conversation about what you're trying to do, we're interested in trying to figure out what some of these workflows are and how we can support it going forward. Cool. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, next question is for Madura. For curved text, should Matplex be disabled and the default label engine be used? So curved text is supported through the ArcGIS Pro AIX workflow. It's one of the things that we wanted to get in for our first release for the ArcGIS Pro to illustrate a workflow. So you don't have to do that. Uh, there are a few other text properties that might be something to reconsider, like a text outline color or a halo, as I mentioned. Those, those might not behave as well as a live text that you would want to edit in Illustrator after the fact. But curved text is actually a really good example to use in Pro to author it in Pro and then bring it into Illustrator. Uh, I also kind of want to give Sarah an opportunity to see if she has anything to add more about labeling or Maplex. You know, we we what what you uh, what Madura just said is is quite accurate. Curved text is it behaves very well when you open it as an AIX file in Illustrator. Great. Uh, next question is for Sarah. Uh, can this workflow support 3D maps made with Esri or just 2D maps? Ooh, that, I'm going to answer that um, 
by we are we are hoping it's on our roadmap it's not we don't have a projected release date for that feature yet but again like maduro was saying please contact us we'd love to learn more about your workflow and how you would envision using 3D. Right now, if you export a 3D map from Pro as an AIX file, it's going to be a flattened rasterized image, um, but, but we, we understand the high demand for 3D and, and we're looking to support that someday. Awesome. Next question is for Madura. Uh, should I ensure that all the feature classes I need are in my map before exporting to an AIX file? Or is there a way to work back and forth between the two? That's a really good question. Should you have all your data set up in ArcGIS Pro? Uh, I would say yes. You want to get all your content as layers, or perhaps you want to set up your definition query and you know get your pro map or layout set up for that export, just like you would do any other way. But the aesthetics or the look and the appearance of that that's something you want to use some of the illustrators graphic editing tools to give it an appearance that you want, then you would do those appearance changes in Illustrator. Now, having said that, I also kind of want to add that the AIX file is a spatially enabled file. And what that means is that when you load that file in Illustrator, as Sarah showed, there's a map board that gets created which means you can then download content from a web GIS. So if you're looking to get maybe some demographic data from Living Atlas or perhaps an imagery or something else that's hosted in your web GIS organization, then you can still do that with an AIX file after you open it in Illustrator. Cool. Next question is for Sarah. We have a Photoshop question. Is there a way to import the legend into Photoshop in a different layer than the map? Hmm. It's a trick question. <laughs> that is a trick question. In a different layer. So if you are, you're, we're talking about exporting an AIX as in an open, I'm not. In a legend into Photoshop. Hmm. I'm, I'm hoping the person who asked that question can reach out to me specifically so we can get some clarification on that question because I don't want to answer without exactly knowing what what the question is. Um, but that's a great question. I don't know, maybe, maybe Madura has more uh, to add than I do at this time. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'd like, I'd like to understand the workflow because um, yeah, depending on what they're trying to do uh, there might be a workflow either through AIX or just straight out of ArcGIS Pro, but let's see what, what they really want to do. I will add to that, um, though, we do have a processes panel. Uh, I, I showed a little bit of it in the demo, but you can build a legend in your map when you're making a map with Illustrator with the processes panel. And, and on, we have wonderful online doc writers who have written out how to use this legend builder. So I wanted to remind users that you can even build a legend with this extension in Illustrator. Cool. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out and we can help you answer that question better. <laughs> uh, next question is for Madura. Uh, is Maps for Adobe a free extension or is there a cost associated? So I think it might help to also uh, share a link in the Q&A and I can do that you know, as we drop off is uh, there are multiple license levels available, uh, some of which are no cost. Uh, now, if you're already an ArcGIS name user, that means you're using an ArcGIS account to use ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Online. Then if you're a creator or a GIS professional, as of right now with the current version, you can use the same account to use Maps for Adobe. So it's included with your ArcGIS named user account. And starting with version 3.1, uh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, starting with version 3.0, which is going to hopefully be released pretty soon here, is that we will also support viewer and editor license levels that you're already perhaps subscribing to with Esri. Cool. Uh, next question 
for Sarah, what about ArcMap? Can you use ArcMap or do you have to use ArcGIS Pro? You can use, okay, so ArcMap, you can export an Illustrator file. However, that does not connect to the mapping extension that we showed you. It does not connect to ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. So because we're, we're moving at Esri towards the ArcGIS Pro workflow, Master Adobe Creative Cloud supports ArcGIS Pro workflows, but it doesn't support the, the um, ArcMap workflow. So while you can export an Illustrator file from ArcMap, it won't connect to the extension. Good question. Mm -hmm. And can I also add to that is that the Illustrator format from ArcMap is a I would say is a pretty old format, which doesn't support a lot of modern illustrative functions. So uh, text editing and other, other graphic editing could be uh, limited if you, if through that ArcMap to Illustrator workflow. But this is something that we're looking to continually improve through the ArcGIS Pro AIX experience. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as you are looking to uh, migrate your workflows perhaps from an ArcMap experience to an ArcGIS Pro experience. Great. Uh, next question is for Madura. Um, can you add your own custom vector tile base maps to sync and work in from Illustrator? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so something that will be available again with our next version, version 3.0, is the ability to work with vector tile base maps. And one of the things you can do with that is you can take an Esri hosted vector base map like the navigation example that Sarah showed and you can customize it. So perhaps you want a certain color for the layers or you want, uh, I apologize, certain color for the road layers or perhaps you don't want a certain amount of detail of the roads, perhaps the uh, inner streets or the, uh, the minor roads is something that you don't want on your map all the time. There is a tool in ArcGIS online called the Vector Tile Style Editor, which you can use to customize the look of your vector base map. And such base maps can also be used through the Maps for Adobe extension when that feature will be supported. Great. Uh, we just have a couple more minutes here. So uh, we'll try to squeeze in a couple more questions. Uh, and the rest of the questions we will continue to answer in the chat. So don't worry if we don't get your question in here. Uh, we will get to you, I promise. Um, next question is for Sarah. Let's see, where did it go? Um, does the download of data use Esri credits? We got a couple questions about credits here. Does the extension use credits? How does that work? So credits on, on the extension run the same, they way, the same way they would uh, if you're using the data and the, the analyses on ArcGIS Online. Um, Again, I'm going to also let Madura fill in any gaps I might have missed in my answer, but that's, that's how credits run with our extension. Good question. Yeah, and I'm going to do the same thing as I mentioned a few um, minutes earlier is I'll share the link and Anna, perhaps um, we can push that link through is to our Maps for Adobe functionality matrix. So this is a table in which we have our different features and capabilities listed, and it lists which of those capabilities consume credits and which don't. So that should give you some more clarity. So we'll put, the, put that in here. Awesome. Uh, we'll probably just get one more question in here, I think. Um, let's see who's the lucky winner. Um, all right. Does this extension have the ability to add additional standalone feature classes, shapefiles, and rasters? Uh, Sarah, you're up. <laughs> yes. Oh, so okay. can you repeat the question so I answer it super accurately? I, I know. I, can you add feature classes to the to your maps with this extension? Yes. Can you add standalone feature classes, shapefiles, and rasters? You can. Yes, you can. You can add um, shapefiles. KMZ and KML files. You can add text, text files and CSV files to the extension, um, all from your local machine um, or any local disk that you have. 
Um, so yes, you absolutely can. You can even define your map board extent based on the extent of this data if you choose to. Um, and we have a tutorial in the upcoming book uh, that has you do this, so. Awesome. Uh, that is it. I think we are all out of time here. Um, it is 2.45. So thank you all for joining. Um, we will continue to answer questions in the chat. Um, so yeah, thank you all for coming and we hope you really enjoyed it.